It's time for a reading assignment chat. It's time for some educational material. If you were to go to the archive, the internet archive, and you were to search for Rules for Radicals by Saul Alinsky, a book I referenced a couple times, just because there's a very funny chapter where they, a black, bunch of black people eat beans, so they fart up an orchestra. Uh, I want you to read it because we are we are going to take the Alinsky pill and we are going to become uh, the Karens. We're going to truly become transformed into the Karen farms. I am tired. I am sick and tired of the high ground. I'm tired of being Mr. Anti-Deplatforming. Uh, Cogent has shown me that if you sit on your hands and wait for six years and hope that one day the internet will become a more sturdy, resilient, anti-fragile infrastructure, uh, you will be disappointed year after year. So now I am 100% pro enforcing the internet's uh, AUP. Uh, I have already seen success that if you complain to a host and if you uh, invoke cogent, they will censor the internet. Someone told me that upon reading my information about how to file organized structured complaints to upstreams, that a DIY HRT directory website, which is a black market pharmaceutical website engineered towards sending uh, Brazilian uh, estrogen contaminated by human hair to children in Canada so that they can inject it directly into their carotid artery. Uh, these websites are particular because it is an illegal black market pharmaceutical site that accepts money by cryptocurrency. These websites are actually vulnerable to deplatforming techniques with very little resistance. So here's what I'm going to do, everybody. I am going to write, uh, I'm going to take the trade secrets that Samuel Collingwood Smith and Liz Fong Jones have perfected over the last seven years about how to complain to domain registrars, DNS providers, upstreams, direct hosts, how to get provider names through Cloudflare because they obfuscate that. I'm going to write in detail how to write a nice, organized, effective complaint that takes links, takes quotes from AUPs, and also possibly takes statutes and uh, executive orders and throws it all together and makes it somebody's fucking problem. And I'm going to educate the masses in a language that a third grader can understand um, how to agitate the branches of the internet to be the change that they want to see because these companies have made it very clear that they are desperate. They are desperate for complaints. They desperately want to be told where on the internet infringing content exists so that they may action it to this day. Um, and fun fact with some companies like um, Cogent in particular, if you file a complaint with Cogent that they send to the downstream that they actually uh, request the provider answer for, even if the answer is accepted and they don't actually force them to remove anything, um, in most service agreements with Cogent, that's going to be $20 each. Every complaint that they receive costs them $20. So if maybe they get 50 complaints a month, a pretty modest amount, if you have a bunch of people sending in complaints, uh, that's $1,000 a month in added in service fees just for abuse complaint handling. Fascinating, isn't it? So um, there are so many moving parts that you don't think about. Like you think about the domain registrar, but did you know about the NIC itself? If somebody's hosting something on an NIC, like for instance, if they're using a cute little domain name that uh, is a, is fashionable, one of those GTLDs, if they are using a GTLD, there's almost a good chance that it's owned by something called Identity.Digital, which was formerly known as Donuts. Um, they were the ones that seize Sneed.Today at a domain registrar level, above the domain registrar level, at the NIC level. So people think, oh, you complain to the host and that's it. And, oh. You got upstreams, and then those upstreams have upstreams all the way up to the tier ones. You have DNS providers. You have the DNS providers upstreams because they have their own upstreams. And they have their own upstreams that uh, also receive complaints. You have the domain registrars, but then you also have the NICs. You have Cloudflare that can help you uh, identify where a service is coming from. There are so many layers to the stack, and all you need to bring down a service is one of them to accept your complaint. Just one of those providers being weak at the knees to some... Uh, uh, nice email, courteous email, identifying readily what the problem is, how it violate, violates their AUP, and how it might also violate United States or uh, local law, wherever they're at. All it takes is one provider, and it comes, it comes down, and they have to replace it. And if you're not experienced in replacing things, you may not know exactly how to do that. It might be a very big pain in the ass if you actually have expected and have relied on one service for years at a time to do it. 
I'm going to explain for everybody how to open Pandora's box. And once it's opened, I have a good feeling that it can never be closed again. And these providers will either have to do one of two things, deal with being the internet censors forever, hire hundreds of people to answer abuse complaints from everybody in the entire world. There's 7 billion people on the internet now. They're gonna have to either figure out how to handle um, abuse uh, contact from the entire world regarding the internet and everything on the internet, or they're gonna have to change their AEP so that they're not liable for what uh, is hosted and they don't ever touch it again. So um, this is what's called in uh, political activism terms, malicious compliance. We're not gonna uh, break any rules. We're not gonna harass anyone, not gonna encourage anyone to do anything that's against any, any law or intimidate any specific person. We are simply going to comply with the rules so much that they eventually cannot function. That is the, uh, the definition of malicious compliance. And then a system like this uh, that holds the entire world's economy, the internet, it's impossible to enforce their terms of service as they are. And if they try to, uh, then uh, they will suffer for it. And if they try to ignore complaints, well, they still have to deal with them. Uh, this is my thought, Chad. Um, so that's where we're at with the, the Cogent stuff. Cogent has followed my, my IPs around forever. Uh, everywhere it goes within hours of them changing, Cogent is there to, to lend out a helping hand. Um, and all it takes is an, an email to them and they're, they're up to date. I'm st and, uh, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of Dave Schaefer pulling this bullshit and I have found uh, incredibly promising ways to deal with the problems um, coming at us. And I don't want to say too much, but I have a long-term plan. I have a, I have a, an ace in my sleeve and it will be used one day. It will be, it will be pulled and it will be played. And when that happens, um, you're going to see the mo I think that at that point, once my ace in, in the, eight, what's it? What, I don't even know the expressions anymore. My brain is fried. Once I play this card, I am pretty sure that Liz Fong Jones will just sue me. Because <laughs> once he realizes uh, how how um, fucking solid I'm going to have the Kiwi Farms after this, I think that he's just going to uh, suck it up and file a frivolous fucking lawsuit to try and compel me, try to bankrupt me. And from then it's on. Then it's on. Then I have no excuse. I can't not sue you. I can't not counterclaim. Because you brought it to me. How is, now it's my, now I have no choice. I am forced. I am compelled. I have obligatory countersuit filing that I need to bring forward at that point. Just how it is. Chaos, chat. Chaos. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.